Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the sixth lecture of DOE. And now, within half an hour of time, we will discuss random variables and probability distribution. And I hope that some of you know what is random variable and what are the different kind of probability distribution, but some of you may not be knowing. So, as a result uh, what I, I think that there must be half an hour of discussion on this. So, let us see what is random variable. The content of uh, presentation now is random variable and its types probability and probability distribution, probability density function, cumulative distribution function, mean and variance of a random variable and important distributions. Let us uh, theoretically define what is a random variable. A random variable is a numerical variable whose measured value can change from one replicate of a random experiment to another. What does it mean? If you recall our example what we are discussing so far that we said that we have done uh, experiment and we got 24 observations and they are all those these 24 observations are randomized. So, the experiment was randomized that means that we in the ground cl clutter level A, B, C or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, ground collateral level 1 to 3 that is low, medium and high and you got 6 data points, here 8 data points, here 8 data points and here 8 data points, total 24 data points. Those data point, data points, the observed y value is this came based on certain random experiment. So, what we say that means in this case the response variable, the, uh, the detection, the signal uh, intensity level uh, at the when the operator is able to detect the target, this is a random variable. So, that means a, a random experiment, the outcome of interest of random experiment is a random variable. Okay. Now, random variable can be discrete, can be continuous. So, random variable can be discrete, two types can be continuous. Suppose the intensity level at target detection, it can have any value. It is not that 90 or 91, it can be 90 point something or some like this. So, that is a continuous random variable, but in some cases you may find you may find that you do not get values in between some values like if I if I if I toss several coins, the number of heads is a random variable, random value, and it's the uh, variable is also random variable. But if I say what is the how many what is the number of heads, you can say n n plus one or five ten like this. You cannot say five point five or six point five or five uh, uh, six point two five. So these are all counts. So these are all discrete data, discrete random variable. So, let us see that uh, theoretically what we will a discrete random variable is a random variable with a finite or countably infinite set of real number for its range. For example, number of scratches on a surface, we can say that 5 scratches, 10 scratches, 50 scratches, proportion of defective parts among 1000 tested, I think it is number of defective parts among 1000 tested. Similarly, number of transmitted bits received in error, 
this number some counts are coming. What is continuous random variable? Continuous random variable is a random variable with an interval either finite or infinite of a real number for its range electrical current you may be you are measuring using the unit ampere. So, it can be having that ampere 5 to 10 ampere anything possible or 50 amperes anything possible 50.5, 50.05, 50.005 everything possible length of a rod pressure exerted in a body temperature uh, in the environment time taken to complete the work voltage in electric circuit weights all those things these are all continuous. So, <clears throat> for discrete I said the number of scratches number of defective parts among these number of transmitted this, but if we make proportion what happen it will it, it, it is it can be within a certain range it can have many values. So, you do not write proportion you say number ok. Then a random variable have a is interesting characteristics is there what is this I say that random variable takes some value, but in advance you cannot tell that what is that value. For example, when you toss a coin you know that two outcomes will be there head or tail, but before or while tossing the coin you cannot say whether head or head will come. If it is a, a random one and, and it is unbiased one you cannot say it head will you will see head. So, that mean outcome is known, but what outcome you will get that is not known. Outcomes are head or tail in case of toss in case of our this detection level that intensity range may be a 70 to 120 that will give the intensity level that is also known, but at when an operator detect through the scope whether he, his intensity level will be 80 or 90 that is not known in advance unless the experiment is conducted. So, so then what happened because of this nature. So, unless the things are not happened we, we are not in a position to know, but fortunately what happened these there are there these can be can be estimated or it can be can be known through certain probability distribution because random variable even though you cannot tell precisely what is the value, but what happen you may say that what is the probability that the value will be less than 90 or what is the probability that the value will be 90 to 100 or if it is a discrete case. So, what is the what is the probability that the number of defective items will be 5. So, that kind of characterization is possible. So, when you talk about random variable we associate it with a probability distribution. Now, the probability distribution in case of discrete random variable it will be discrete probability distribution in case of continuous random variable it will be continuous probability distribution ok. Anyhow let us theoretically define that what is probability? Probability is used to quantify the likelihood or chance that a measurement described by a random variable falls within some sets of values. A probability is usually expressed in terms of a random variable uh, they are basically inter, uh, interchangeable. When you say random variable, you definitely know that you are basically interested to know the probability distribution of the random variable. When you say probability distribution, you are basically talking about distribution of the random variable. Okay. Now, let us see one example. If we repeatedly manufacture parts, that means replicate the random experiment an infinite number of times and 25 percent of them will have lengths in the interval 10.8 millimeter to 11.2 millimeter and if y denotes the path length and the then the statement the probability statement can be written in the following manner that probability y belongs to 10.8 to 11.2 this interval it will be 0.25 or probability that the y varies in between 10.8 to 11.2 in terms of 10.8 less than equal to y less than equal to 11.2 that will be 0.25. This is what is the way uh, we define uh, define probability.
Okay. Now I'll go quickly uh, give you some of the pro uh, or glance through some of the properties. For example, if we consider y is a set of real number, then the the y value, the random variable value, it belongs to that set of real number is equal to one. It its practical meaning is that the probability value can be maximum of one. Means the probability value can maximum value, value of probability can be one. The second one is, is 0 less than equal to p y belongs to an e a set of e and even e less than equal to 1 for any set e. So, here what does it mean that probability value can never become negative it will lie in between 0 and 1. Suppose there are there are uh, k number of mutually exclusive sets representing that may be k number of mutually exclusive events. So, what happened? if you take sum of them uh, and find out the probability of them, then this is nothing but finding out the individual probability and summing them. This is the, this is what is written here. If E 1, E 2, E k are mutually exclusive sets, probability y belongs to this equal to probability y belongs to E 1 plus probability y equal to E 2 like this. Okay. So, these are the some, these are the some properties which you will be, you keep in your mind because uh, you may require sometimes uh, to derive some uh, statistics or some other things. Now, <coughs> as, I, as I said that random variable and probability distributions are very much close and there are probability continuous random variable. So, continuous probability distribution and discrete random variable discrete probability distribution. So, this probability distribution in case of continuous variable is termed as probability density function, probability density function which we say P D F. In case of discrete we say probability mass function which we say P M F. I expect that you know that probability density and probability mass function if you do not know you go through the engineering statistics book by Montgomery, Ranjar and Huvele and you will get a fair treatment on probability distribution. For the time being, you just understand that this is what is probability PDA, probability density function. A x axis will be the variable of a random variable of interest here it is y and y axis is the density which is function of y and, and when I say that what is the probability that that uh, a less than equal to y and less than equal to b then you are talking about the area under the car within this range and that is what we have written this. So, this area is computed using this formula a to b f y d y. Now, f y what is the what is this function f y that depends on what kind of distribution it is. If it is normal distribution then with normal parameters we can define f y. Okay, those things you will see later on. Another one is the cumulative distribution function. Suppose, I, I consider a value a here and I say that what is the probability that that y value will be less than equal to a, then this is nothing but this is the area under the curve, under this curve less than a and this is written that mean as we assume that the random variable ranges from minus infinity to minus infinity plus infinity. So, that is why we are writing like this the cumulative distribution func function is f y probability that y less than equal to a certain value y small y is minus infinity to y f u d u when this it ranges y ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, for continuous distribution we use cum probability density function and also cumulative distribution function, cumulative distribution function will there be, will be there for discrete distribution also. But interestingly this is a, this is representing the population, the characteristics of the population in, in this case y, the process model, the output response variable that is y, this, this is nothing but the, it is basically there is a physical process and if I, I say that y, for y is like this, behaving like this then this is what is happen y is behaving like this 
that this is a statistical process. You have converted a physical process to statistical process, statistical process. In physical process is this one, so you are giving like this and like this and some x, some y you are getting and statistical process here what happened this y is 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 this is the f y and this side y and this side f y. This is one kind of interpretation ok. So, that means this distribution if you know that means you know the behavior of y when, when you observe in reality you find out what is the value what may earlier values and what will be the next value that also you will be seeing when when you get that one. But here what happened using this past data you know that this is the distribution. So, what happened may be your variable value of uh, value of interest is this and you want that your your all the values will be less than this then you wanted to know what is the probability for that the y value will be less than this this may be y target value then this is nothing but the area under this curve and this you must know because sometimes what happen suppose if, if y value greater than this this may be this may be a case that these all those are not will be accepted by the uh, customer then these are all rejects rejects so you want to know what is the probability that things will be rejected this will give you valuable information more interestingly this diagram is giving you the what is the behavior of y whether it is normal, not normal or some exponential or something else that will come in terms of statistical distribution. So, as I told you earlier also that the distribution uh, that or the population is characterized by certain parameters. So, if I say my this population is characterized by this distribution that means, this distribution definitely have certain parameters what are those parameters? This parameters is mu and the dispersal. Now, if I know mu and sigma square, then I can I can do much analysis and I can infer about the population. So, <coughs> okay. so what is in, in population domain, what is this mu? Mu is nothing but the mean of the population which is expected value of y this we write in terms of minus infinite to plus infinite if we consider y range from minus infinite to plus infinite and then y f y d y. Please remember y f y d y suppose if I ask you what is the value of integration minus infinite to plus infinite f y d y this is the area under the curve this will be 1 total complete probability total probability is 1 only it cannot be more. But here one more thing is added here multiplied y times this this is the expected value means I can say that if you do another experiment and you may say that you may say that the response value will be this this is the best possible value expecting you are expecting that this is going to happen. Similarly, what will be the expected value of variance that uh, that is sigma square. So, sigma square is expected value of dispersion with reference to suppose y minus mu the square. We have seen earlier in sample calculus sample statistics calculation y i minus mu square by n minus 1 all those things we have written uh, this square. This is nothing but again minus infinite to plus infinite y minus mu square f y t y. Okay. So, as it is from minus infinite to plus infinite if and if you know mu and and then definitely you will be able to integrate it and get the value. Suppose, if you do not know mu, so then you cannot calculate the sigma square. What does this mean? mu is the mu is the mean of the population not mean of the sample mean of the population. So, many a times what happen you call it representative sample compute sample average which will be considered as the estimate of mu and that case you use this and get this one. Okay. But please keep in mind that population parameters are seldom known. Okay. Now, what will happen 
if we go for discrete random variable. See the discrete random variable case here y value are all some counts here here that mean in the in the graph in this graph the every values this is its location its y this location is this in between and y1 and y2 nothing is there so because if i say y1 is 50 and y2 is 52 or 50 sorry y2 is 51 so in between that 50 and 51 51.5 is not occurring because of discrete nature so now in this case what happened what is the probability that y1 uh, y value will be y1 then it this is nothing but the height of this bar relative height basically of this bar. so here this side probability of yj and this side y this is giving you the probability mass function not density function i request you to know what is the difference between mass function and density function then <coughs> cumulative similarly less than equal to y here you will be using summation when you are going for mean and variance you see mean here instead of integration you are using here summation i equal to 1 to n y i f y i here also instead of integration you are using summation so analogous to this when i am saying that mean in case of continuous expected value of y minus infinite to plus infinite y f y d y so when it is discrete what you are writing this quantity you are writing like this y i f y i and i equal to i can say all i all y i and here you are not writing integration here this integration sim part you are writing sum summation here also in case of discrete it will be sum of that all y i then y i minus mu i think this is y i minus mu square f y i this f y i this so in place of y you are using y i because i is ranging from 1 to a particular value n here also 1 to particular value n you are writing y i and function that is pdf of y i and here also this then this actually if the observations are in identically independent identification then this will be y i only hmm, yeah, this will be f y so that mean y i f y sum of i equal to 1 to n if all y are in identically distributed when all pdf values are same anyhow but this is the general formula okay so essentially what you know now you know random variable you know random variable and then there will be probability distribution so you know that continuous probability distribution then you know the discrete probability distribution and you also know that some properties of probability properties of probabilities properties of probability and we have come, come you have seen that mean and variance these are nothing but expected values expected value the expected operator you are using depending on if it is mean expected value of y if it is variance expected value of y minus mu square this much is known related to random variables so as that expectation is a very very important concept here particularly in doe and later on we will be using different kind of expected expectation so i want to give you a elaborate discussion on on some of the important concepts where uh, which you will be using in in this particular subject suppose c is a constant then what is the expected value of c it will be c only what is the expected value of y if y uh, y is a random variable it is mu now then what will be the expected value of c times y it will be as c become constant it will come out it is nothing but c times expected value of y which is c mu 
if c is a constant what is the variability of c it is 0 what is the variability of y we have seen that sigma square that is the variance variance of y is sigma square variance of c is 0 variance of y is sigma square in that case what is the variance of c y c times y interestingly it is not c variance of y it will be c square variance of y c square sigma square now now consider two random variable y1 and y2 suppose you are summing them up and then you want to know the expected value of these two two suppose expected value of y1 plus y2 y1 is one random variable y2 is another random variable then this will be nothing but y1 plus y2 so if y1 expected value is mu1 and y2 expected value is mu2 then this is the formula okay now if i say then what is the variance of y1 plus y2 interestingly it will be variance of y1 plus variance of y2 plus two times covariance of y1 y2 this because we are saying y1 y2 to random variable but we have not said that whether they are dependent or uh, they are independent or not if they are orthogonal to each other means they are independent means y1 no way dependent on y2 or vice versa then the covariance will become 0 for independent variable case this will be variance of y1 plus y2 will be the variance of individual random variable if if y1 and y2 are independent ok so other way it will be like this suppose what will happen instead of plus if i write minus here so it will not be minus it will always be plus this will be always be plus irrespective of whether you are writing plus minus here but this will become minus so if if two variable random variables are independent then what will happen variance of y 1 plus minus this is always variance of y 1 plus variance of y 2 irrespective of plus minus in here variance is additive only if they are dependent to each other there is a covariance covariance means means one value occurrence of y 1 value depends on y 2 value also and vice versa then this is there is a normally you are going to work if i read more you read more if i read less you read less or if I read more you read less this this kind of relation is there then you are varying we, we two are varying either positively or negatively we are varying that is what is covariance ok. So, then what will happen this will be sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square if sigma 1 square is the variability of variance of y 1 and sigma 2 square is the variance of y 2 ok. So, <coughs> So, let, let us see some more things suppose y 1 and y 2 independent then what is the expected value of y 1 times y 2 this will be expected value of y 1 times expected value of y 2 equal to mu 1 times mu 2. But what will happen if I want to know the ratio division it will never become irrespective of whether y 1 y 2 is independent or not ok. So, <coughs> now uh, the last one. So, you know probability distribution there will be discrete distribution there will be continuous distribution for DOE we will be interested mostly in normal distribution we will be interested to this and then there will be certain sampling distribution like T dis Z distribution, T distribution, chi square distribution, F distribution this this under this sampling distribution will be used. But in general when you talk about probability distribution whether discrete or continuous there are many probability distributions depending on the nature of the variable. So, let us see some of the continuous probability distribution, normal distribution, log normal distribution, gamma distribution. Weber distribution, beta distribution, 
there will be there will be exponential distribution hmm, erlang distribution uh, many things many more now under discrete binomial distribution binomial distribution poisson distribution exponential distribution will be under continuous distribution okay so i am changing here okay fine so <coughs> sometimes uh, these mistakes are good because if you go through uh, this and you find out that you are able to identify what mistake has taken place that gives you uh, more clarity and you you will be able to keep in mind that okay exponential distribution will be uh, will be the continuous distribution it is not the discrete distribution okay so again i uh, i just conclude that that in this lecture it's a very simple one we talk about random variable we talk about probability distribution we talk about discrete random variables we talk about continuous uh, random variable we talk about expectation from mean point of view variance point of view we talk about that different kinds of expected values when the con a constant is multiplied then what will be the uh, expected value in terms of mean and in terms of variance and when there are variables they are related what will happen to their uh, variance of some of them and in that manner so suppose if i say that what is the variance of y1 plus y2 dot dot yn and if i say they are independent then you will definitely say that is variance of y1 plus variance of y2 dot 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 variance of yn now in addition if i say that the variance of all of them are same sigma square then you say sigma square plus sigma square plus sigma square then this will be n time sigma square if i assume that all the all the all those y1 to yn all those variable they have same variance component okay so <clears throat> in addition you know you have seen that there are different kinds of distribution depending on the situation it will be used but for doe design analysis of experiment we will be mostly relying on normal distribution and other uh, sampling distribution hmm. in next class uh, next i think next part 1 next class we will discuss in detail the normal distribution very very important and next and the next to next class we will discuss about uh, the t distribution chi square distribution f distribution Um, because they are very important and they will be useful in hypothesis testing uh, time and also um, when you in estimation when we develop the confidence interval that time also you will require to know what kind of distribution it is and accordingly you will be reasonable hope you have uh, understood uh, you are free to uh, email me and uh, use the forum effectively thank you very much